Well, some regrettable and unnecessary noise around the stadium in some parts of the stadium during that tribute. So we're about to get underway. Scotland, dark blue shirts, white shorts, red socks, England white shirts and blue shorts. Scotland will kick from left to right, defending the West Stand here and Hampden Park. For only the sixth time in 24 years, the old enemies meet. Friendly? No. This is much, much more. There's the Hampden Roar. The Greeks, the start of Scotland against England. Now we're underway. Long ball pumped forward towards the edge of the England penalty area that's brought under control by Declan Rice. Mark Gerhi, who wanted five, but starting on the left of the two centre halves, gives Lewis Dunk his first international touch for some five years. Back it goes for Rice. Rice just outside his own penalty area as he uh, prepares to control this. Bring it under control. Back it goes for Ramsdale, who uh, looked to go long. Scotland. Pressing with an intensity, England are playing out under immediate pressure. Phillips heading it forward towards Bellingham, and then Phillips winning the loose ball back in the midfield and working it wide for Kyle Walker. First opportunity for the England right back to make his way forward. Scotland back in a defensive shape very quickly. Walker can't make any significant progress. Now he can roll it through inside the area. Kane have made a run, but from an offside position, we're a minute in. It's Scotland nil, England nil. Alongside me, we'll hear from Stuart Pearce in a moment. But firstly, good evening, Chris. Well, am I? Yeah, well, I have to say, I think Scotland have had two opportunities, even from the Tierney, straight from kickoff. Go the balls in the air long enough. Go and challenge. Win that first header. You know, win all those those little battles. Jack Kenny has an opportunity there just to keep possession of the ball, just fire it into the, the likes of Callum McGregor in the, in the midfield. And again, it's a misplayed pass, and straight away you're defending again. Now, tonight you're going to concede possession, you're not going to see a lot of it. When you have it, you have to be better with it. I think they do have a lot of the ball, Stuart. That is uh, one area that England fans are hoping is better than it was at the weekend, and the England coaching staff will be as well, where England dominated the possession in Rotswar against Ukraine, but by God, Southgate's own admission, it didn't really click in the final third, and he'll be wanting some significant improvement on that tonight. He certainly will. I, th I think our defensive side of our game and build-up was OK, but from midfield onwards, there wasn't enough cutting edge by any means. Walker trying to drive forward, wins the first corner of the night, which... Comes off Andy Robertson backtracking on the left hand side of his own penalty area. It will be a corner that will be taken on the England right hand side. And Kieran Trippi will go out and take it. I think it's interesting. I mean, at the start of the game, the anthems and everything, there was an atmosphere around the stadium. Scotland have got to be careful. They don't show too much respect for England for the sake of their game. As you mentioned earlier, Chris. When that ball's in the air, the first challenge, whatever, it's not been there at the moment. No, you're spot on. Even there, Kyle Walker driving. Andy Robertson, he's, what, three, four yards away. He's, he's waiting for that ball to go in behind. Someone, he needs a little bit of help and, and, and double up. Can Tierney go out and, and give him a little bit of support there? Slide delay before this England corner. Two players making runs from the edge of the penalty area. That's the intention. It's delivered over them. Out towards Declan Rice. Unmarked left-hand side of the box. He's Dinter. High ball back in. Out comes Gund as well. Punches it clear. Back out towards Trippier on the England right-hand side. The corner taker. He goes to Phillips. Phillips in turn for Walker. The deepest lying of England's outfield players. But he's still 10 yards inside Scotland territory. Phillips has it now inside the centre circle. Marcus Rashford, who scored in each of his last three England starts, waits patiently for a ball to be played in his direction on the left-hand side, but Rice just goes back for Walker. England will be more than happy to try and take the sting out of the game in these early stages by dominating the opening spells of possession. Another ball intended for Foden this time down the inside, right channel is uh, overhit. It's a pass that England have already inside the opening three and a half minutes, look for a couple of times, trying to get the ball in between Tierney and Hendry in the Scotland back line. Yeah, well, that's where the, the space is, Jim. You know, I think uh, Aaron Hickey and, and Robertson are, are not in, in line. It's not a straight back five. They are a little bit advanced, so that ball with quality uh, down both flanks is, is, can cause problems. Angus Gunn, they're very, very strong. Made the decision early to come out and make a contact. And he's winning his sixth cap for his country tonight. Now, all of them have come this year. Angus Gunn, born in England. His dad, very proud Scotsman, also won six caps. 
Brian, I know, extremely proud of uh, the fact that uh, Angus has uh, switched nationalities and is uh, now playing for Scotland. And he's had a very good start to his uh, international career as well, just conceding the one goal up to this point, which came from a Haaland penalty. There's a game that Scotland won in Norway. Remember, if uh, Norway against Georgia is a draw tonight, then Scotland will have qualified for the Euros. We'll keep you updated with all of the action from that game in Oslo. The other game in Scotland's group tonight, Spain against Cyprus in Granada. Uh, two games in England's group tonight, uh, both with big implications as well. Uh, Italy taking on Ukraine in Milan, Malta against North Macedonia in Tokali. And England, by the end of the night, may well be in a position where they only need a draw against Italy. Live on TalkSport next month to also qualify. Here's Ramsdale playing out from the back. It's 0-0 with five minutes gone here at Hamden Park on TalkSport. Jim Bradford, Chris Uelamo and Stuart Pearce talking you through the action. Two of the three of us have played for our countries. Ball played out towards Rashford, left-hand side of the penalty area. He's uh, trying to find a way through past Porteous. He was claiming there was a little double ricochet, but a corner has been given by the Italian referee on the left. I think this is what England have got to do more of that frustrated us so much against the Ukraine. You know, we got the ball into the mid-band and never played those passes that were going to turn the opposition's back line down. They've already played that ball four times. Three on the right, one on the left, and it's false corners. Now, Trippier on corner-taking duty from both flanks tonight. And certainly initially, and Phil Foden offering himself for the short one, and McTominay's keeping an eye on that. But it's going to be a right-footed in, swinging delivery towards the edge of the six-yard box, very easily repelled. Good header away, though. Back out towards Trippier. Trippier for Calvin Phillips. Phillips dinking it over the top and uh, headed away again, this time by Kiki, and out of play for another corner which will be taken on the England right this time. Six minutes gone, and England have uh, won three early corners. Yeah, England just, every time they get a corner, they can afford to push in. Every England player, by the goalkeepers, within, what, 30 metres of the Scotland goal, they can do that because of Cole Walker's pace. It gets them out of so much trouble. Now, Walker's starting position, as the deepest of uh, England's outfield players, is still only eight yards outside the area as the corner comes in. And Lewis Duncan is very adept at attacking those in the Premier League games. Slightly off balance by the time he got to him in the far post area. And it's gone behind and out of play for a goal kick. Seven gone, Scotland nil, England nil here on Talk Sport. England turning over possession again. Fogg with a clever little back heel flick down the right hand side. Bellingham able to help it on. Walker just wanted a little bit of thinking time before delivering. Didn't really have it. He ends up getting a throw. Scotland feel that it should be a free kick over on the far touchline and that uh, Walker was uh, guilty of a foul he then took the throw quickly with a uh, Scotland player still down injured over on the far touchline but I think a mass of the referee was having none of that and he said you'll have to wait and now the team is back on his feet play can continue so uh, back up without the need for any treatment here in team and his club football in Spain uh, this season having moved on loan from Arsenal to Real Sociedad where he's She's made the one appearance so far. England with the throw go way back inside their own half. Dunk to Gerhi. One of the more inexperienced said the half partnerships that England have fielded in the recent times. Just the second cap for the Brighton man tonight, while it's number six for Gerhi. So only eight between them. Walker wins a throw. It wasn't necessarily his intention coming back. It's a flicked off McGinn as he. Look to play back towards Duncan. Goes out of play for an England throw midway inside their own half. They've gone, nil Yeah, England have definitely started uh, the better, more comfortable. Scotland a little bit frantic at the minute, you know, not seeing a lot of the ball, but when they get the opportunity, giving it straight back to England, if it's a poor pass, uh, poor decision-making or even poor positioning, has to, the levels have to rise. Phillips flicking it over his shoulder. He's delighted to be back playing football. He's seen only six minutes of first team action for Manchester City this season. And sprayed a pass out towards the left-hand side for Rashford, but missed him. And he goes out for a throw that'll be taken on the Scotland right-hand side. And Ryan Porteous will come across to take it. England coming into this on the back of four wins in five. Scotland won better five wins in a row. First time they've won five in a row and scored more than two goals in each of those games for 74 years. So this is literally generational form that... Scotland are showing at the moment. It's the nil-nil in that crucial game between Norway and Georgia that we're keeping an eye on tonight, incidentally. And that's a game that the Scots are desperate to end all square. Here's Porteous, back inside his own half. 
Hendry, who's playing his club football out in Saudi Arabia now after a £6 million move over the summer. Rice is able to intercept a through ball and turn it down towards Marcus Rashford. Rashford can turn, driving, can't get past Porteous, and then a, a good turn in the midfield. Slightly too good for Callum McGregor. And uh, Bellingham wins a free kick on halfway. Well, it was a great opportunity there for Portis just to fill that one in behind. McTominay made an excellent run. It's just that quality of pass as well. Declan Rice intercepted it and, like you say, keep possession of the ball and win themselves a free kick on the halfway line. Tierney back to Bellingham. Uh, Bellingham inside his own half for uh, Mark Gurhi. With 84% of the possession up to this point, but it's of it in good areas, it's all what you do with it they haven't forced Gunn into anything of note at all so far, just the one very well dealt with corner that he came out and punched but other than that England a dominating possession but it's a means to a, not a means to an end so far, it's a throw to be taken over on the Scottish left They're taking short into the feet of McGregor and then back for Tierney Henry for Porteous inside the centre circle the Watford defender just uh, bringing it back towards the halfway line before turning forward again for Celtic's Callum McGregor. Movement came down the line from McGinn, but the ball has been switched back through a uh, midfield area and then behind Porteous, and Gunn's going to be able to come out and mop up. Ten gone, nil nil straight. Yeah, we, we've just seen an, an action there by Robertson that was perfect for what the game needed at that moment in time. Walker's got the ball and he's just run at him at sprint pace and put him under pressure. Now Rashford will chase the ball that's played forward. Gunn comes out, deals with it very well. Offside flag up anyway. And not only has he done that, he's ended up getting his team a throw in, gives the crowd a lift, gets his team on the front foot. And that was probably the most offensive action that Scotland have played in these first 11 minutes. And I think they should do a little bit more of that. Now one of the other games in England's group, Malton Hill, North Macedonia won. Uh, from an England perspective, now England only need a, a point uh, home to Italy next month to qualify if Ukraine and Macedonia don't both win tonight, but North Macedonians are already ahead. Ukraine against Italy is nil-nil. Both the games in Scotland's group also goals at the moment. The only other qualifying goal so far tonight, Belgium leading Estonia 1-0. And night falling here in uh, southern Glasgow with 12 minutes gone at nil-nil as the ball is played for, it's a good turn Kane able to get across but he couldn't get past Porteous read the situation really well and it's potentially damaging there for Scotland with Henry having been caught and turned Kane bulldozing past him Porteous swept up now Scotland will break forward the offside flag may come up to restrict this attacking phase and indeed belatedly it does free kick to England well, they can't. Scotland can't defend like that. It's, it's three for three for three. You know, it's a straight ball over the top. Uh, Henry mistimes it. Kane he reads the flight of the ball ever so well. But Portis, fantastic defending, seen the danger, got himself anticipated it, got himself over there, and intercepts that. But they cannot go three for three. You know, you've got you've got uh, Portis on on Rashford at this side, Henry on uh, Kane, and uh, Tierney on uh, Foden at the other side. It's a straight ball over the top. There wasn't, a, there wasn't any special movement, no quality. It was just a direct ball that was that was uh, time wrong by Jack Henry. Uh, Italy lead Ukraine by a goal to nil. Davide Fratesi is the man that has scored that goal. 13 minutes gone. Scotland nil, England nil. In the company of Chris Wellamo, the former Scotland international, the former England captain Stuart Pearce, alongside me as well, with uh, Mark Gurhi in possession for England, brought forward towards Calvin Phillips. Phillips back inside his own half for Ramsdale. Winning his fourth cap tonight. Clean sheets in the first two, but she fought home the hungry in the last one. Foden playing the ball forward, but that's easily cut out at the back by Billy Gilmore stepping up and through the midfield. Hickey back for Porteous at time for the second touch. Gilmore's got it now. Gilmore on the stretch did well to divert it past Foden. And now Scotland will be able to get going down the left-hand side with Tierney finding Robertson. Robertson's ball in, the off-balance Gurhi able to steer it away before he got to Shea Adams. Big appeals for a Scotland free kick. And the referee, having had a little bit of deliberation, has given the free kick Scotland's way. Eight yards outside the penalty area, left of centre Stuart Pearce. Yeah, I, I'm thinking this game and what I've seen at the moment, Jim, is going to hinge on which team play the best quality ball in and beyond the opposition's defence and who make the best runs. 
because at the moment both teams have looked to play that ball in behind and if you get that right tonight you'll end up being the victor down that left hand side when Andy Robertson there he's got his head up here and he's breaking his neck to get in behind just take another touch forward wait a pass in behind he's trying to fire it into Che Adams feet you know I think it's if anything hang the ball up one of those fight balls really put the defenders at the defensive line under, under a little bit of pressure there but fantastic anticipation from Carl, Callum McGregor there going and trying to contest it and obviously winning the free kick Alan Ramsdale standing with his back against his right hand post asking for three in the wall Gilmore and Robertson the two Scotsmen standing over this set piece just slightly left of centre and it's pretty much at the limit of range I mean the wall is four yards outside the box so it's a thick end of 35 yards out here but an opportunity to dink it in for the aerial challenges Robertson Porteous coming to attack it who's dumped the got his head to it just Phillips won the seconds inside his own penalty area and Walker's more than happy to hammer it clear Kane will chase after it Robertson back defending has sold his goalkeeper short no not quite Gunn read it really well and got outside the penalty area in time to clear. You've got to give uh, Dunk credit there. He, he followed the run and it was a great ball in into a really good area for Scotland. But Dunk just saw, the, saw it out and got the first contact. Here's Dunk at the back for England. And playing it for Rice and then Phillips out to the right hand side. And Walker's uh, miscontrol is a moment that's accompanied by. Howls of delight and derision from the Scottish faithful here. A crowd of about 51,000 here at Hamden Park tonight. Here's Andy Robertson, played out of the Scottish left. Two inside the penalty area, including uh, Scott McTominay, who's been in such wonderful goal-scoring form, but they don't get a chance to deliver. Andy Robertson was the pass, but it just went past him briskly. And he goes out for a goal kick, which will be taken by Ramsdale for England. 16 minutes in, and uh, having weathered the early storm it's been a better three or four minute spell for Scotland and a little bit more proactive and on the front foot yeah definitely I think a little bit more quality as well Callum McGregor uh, Andy Robertson and, and McGinn linking up very well again turning down the opportunity to put the ball in the box and yeah ask the question you know it's uh, we've got players in there that's, that can go and win those aerial duels keep the ball alive never never shy away from, from putting the ball in the box McTominay Robertson and then McGinn trying to work it back into his path Dunk gets it away, it'll almost immediately come back. Gilmore doing well, and a strong challenge from Declan Rice in the midfield on McTominay. Well timed. England might have a chance for the counter attack. Kane didn't make the run, Rashford was anticipating. And it just goes through to the edge of the uh, Scotland penalty area. Real harem, scarum stuff in the, the heart of that midfield battle. It was 0 0 the last time the two sides met. England had hit the post by now through John Stones, but. Now, despite having overwhelming possession that day at Wembley, England, like Scotland, only managed one shot on target in that game. At the fifth meeting, this is the sixth between the two sides of this century. Now, England have won three of the first four. Ball played forward here by Gerhi. Good strong had a back by Porteous, Phillips trying to get it over the top, Rashford might be offside here, flag stayed down for now, he'll cut onto his right foot and then work it back in for Foden who skies it over the bar. Yeah, it's that sort of pass that we've just seen there, a, a simple ball, nice and composed by Phillips, just helped it on over the top of the Scottish back line and with the pace that the likes of Rashford has got, he was straight onto it. I think England out of possession of the ball. You look at uh, Rashford, he's just going in and helping Bellingham and Foden on the other side as well, just smothering uh, Billy Gilmore, Callum McGregor, not allowing them to go on the ball. They have to they have to figure it away. You know, they have to figure it away to get, get the space and, and, and receive it and turn and just keep possession. But England without the ball have been very, very good. You're listening to Talk Sports. Been a superb day of coverage uh, today. On my way up here to. Glasgow thoroughly enjoy listening to uh, Ali McCoyst on breakfast this morning uh, with Andy Townsend and uh, David Moyes uh, joining them and Spurs manager Ange Postacoglu on with White and Jordan as well a vibrant atmosphere here at Hampden Park and Scott McTominay's pass was uh, just kept alive by Gilmore who looked second favourite for a moment but uh, still got there first and will put a bit of pressure on Gunn but Gunn can get it away, Trippier playing it left back again today, can uh, step forward and try to flick it forward, and it's come off McTominay last, and gone out of play for a throw that'll be taken on the England left-hand side by Trippier, 
who has played out left back in 10 of his last 21 internationals so pretty much as much time on the left in the recent pass as he has on the right and for England covering almost as a sort of first reserve on either side these days seems to be the role that he's casting here's Lewis Dunn for England finding Mark Gurhey back he goes for Dunk again played forward very cleverly between the lines where Kane had dropped off and he'll now stab one over the top Rashford again may well be offside but the Italian assistant referees kept his flag down for now Rashford with a clever little back he'll flick Bellingham going forward and the challenge came in on him from Porteous and then the assistant referee puts his flag in we do have VAR tonight and that will be certainly instrumental in the fact that uh, the flags are being heavily delayed as is the jurisdiction but these aren't even particularly close to you no uh, we're calling them straight away from up here in, in the three or four that have happened already you know and we can see it but listen if that's the laws of the game to keep the game flowing so be it I suppose but unfortunate there but when it's as blatant as that you know well, exactly. Portis could injure Rashford there and I just don't understand it you know you can see by the cut of the grass yeah. that Rashford's clear offside it stays nil nil now Porteous will chip the ball forward with 20 minutes in and the chances are a real premium so far here on Talk Sport Ryan Porteous again getting it clear but Gurhi watches that out of play for a throw that'll be taken on the uh, England left hand side Scotland have won their last six home games they've got a really good record here at Hamden haven't won seven in a row since 1997 if they can uh, achieve it tonight against the old enemy it would be uh, so sweet best run here for 26 years Gurhi looking long this time Foden making a good run great control as well bringing it down on the top of his left boot he's just spun it out towards the right hand touchline taking it away from Tierney and now Declan Rice is involved Bellingham will be able to take it on he's had a quiet start and played into the feet of uh, Foden I think he was looking for Walker and Foden intercepted the pass. Back he comes for Bellingham again now. Calvin Phillips inside the centre circle. And then Phillips will get a return ball from Dunk and try and play a more progressive one now for towards Harry Kane. Kane forced back by McTominay. Only has the two centre halves behind him from an England perspective. That's how far he's dropping off. Dunk will get it forward. Looking for Foden between the lines. Foden losing out. McGregor did really well. Now will play it out towards the uh, Scottish left hand side. Gilmore back he goes for Tierney Tierney towards the edge of the D for Jack Henry Henry down towards Porteous Hickey wanting to make a run forward it's steered instead towards Che Adams on one of those nights where he's glad he's not getting paid by the touch tonight There's still a looseness a little bit about England in the midfield where Phillips having had possession worked it back for Ramsdale Ramsdale to dunk and the intensity of the Scotland press is just asking a few isolated questions of England here uh, a couple in the team that don't look particularly happy with the ball at their feet with uh, Scotsman bearing down on them in this way I've got to say they've played some brilliant one and two touch to get out of potential problems on that occasion Jim once again just prior to that another raking long pass over the back of the Scottish back line Foden on this occasion well timed run and if I was playing in the England side now, my first look would be beyond the opposition's defence. Yeah, it's, it's on every time. I think Hickey and uh, Robertson are taking a more advanced, so it's basically three for three. So if you're mark marking your man, it's so it's impossible if the ball's perfect. It's, it's a running race. So is that too much of a risk in your eyes, then, the, the Steve Clark tactic to do it like that? Well, I think the players have, have been told to do that because it keeps them on the front foot. But with the quality of England, if there's no pressure on the ball, I think the likes of Hickey and Robertson have to then drop if there's no pressure on the on the, the defensive player in England when, and in possession. England still have it. They've had it for the vast majority of the game so far. But it remains 0-0 here on Talk Sport. Mark Gurhey to his right hand side for Lewis Dunk elsewhere North Macedonia leading away to Malta in England's group the big game as far as Scotland are concerned Norway against Georgia in Oslo is still nil nil draw there tonight and Scotland are through with three games to spare in their qualification group Bellingham made a good third man run through the midfield that time but there was no through ball forthcoming England still have it 
Now Bellingham makes another run. It's an excellent ball to find it from Rashford. Chipped it inside the penalty area. Walker arriving, unmarked. Right-hand side of the area, drives it across the face of goal. And just why? Only a half chance, but the best moment either side had created. And Walker, having scored his first international goal the other night in uh, Rotspaf, could have made it two and two. Yeah, once again, it's a really good diagonal ball in behind the opposition. Great run for, from in to out, but once again, you don't look, it's not a tactical thing. If you're a defender, you've got to pick these runs up. That's the bottom line. You've got to pick a run up if someone's running in behind you, so you've got to give yourself that extra yard. Gun gets it away for Scotland. Four towards halfway. And Che Adams had very little change out of Gurney so far. But Scotland do win the seconds in the midfield this time. It's worked for down the uh, left arm again. Robertson winning a throw, which will be taken level with the edge of the uh, England penalty area. He's taking it quickly as well. Back for Tierney. But Tierney leaving it for McGregor, his former Celtic teammate. Now Scotland working it with uh, McTominay, who's playing a slightly different role in this game than he did against Cyprus. He's uh, not quite got the licence to push forward uh, so much and uh, be uh, in such immediate support of Shea Adams as he was in that game. Down the uh, right-hand side of a forward three, really. England will be able to get it away. And uh, again, the whistle has gone. And it's going to be an England ball over on the far touch. So 25 minutes in, Chris Uelamo, it's nil-nil. Yes, on that one, Jim, I think when Callum McGregor finds himself in a more advanced position, it's good It's good professionalism there from Scott McTominay. He drops to be the deepest midfielder, just to give an option. And I think Callum McGregor, for me, is probably the most comfortable player to receive the ball in those little pockets. So I get, it's, it's part and parcel. They, they have to rotate it. And if Callum McGregor finds himself in that advanced area, then it's down to the likes of McGinn or McTominay to go and get himself line me Gilmore. Now England will look for a, a long ball over the top again. And Gunn will come and clear. A really fine touch, not quite Trippier, beating McTominay in the air. And then Gilmore heads it down towards the touchline. And that'll be a Scotland free kick for a foul by Bellingham. And there's been a goal in that game in Oslo. Talk Sports Ian Danta. Norway won, Georgia nil, 26 gone. It just had to be Erling Haaland, didn't it? Firm header at the far post after some lovely wing trickery from 18-year-old Antonio Nusa and his cross found Haaland perfectly. Norway won, Georgia nil. Thanks, thank you. England will be able to bring it away. Bad news that as far as Scotland are concerned. Uh, desperately hoping now for a Georgia equaliser. England on the front foot and the space for Walker and Bellingham's found him and Kane's in the middle but the ball didn't get there good sliding challenge puts it away that was good covering by Hendry but at the expense of another corner really what England played some absolute top quality football straight through the third set incisive football forward attacking football the stuff we probably didn't see in the Ukraine because the game opened up slightly there didn't it and Scotland probably got a taste of if you open up against us this is what's going to happen so this is England's fourth corner and like two of the previous three, it'll be taken on the right flank. Swept in, left-footed, deep towards Harry Kane, didn't get there. Headed away, Rice is controlled, just letting down very slightly. It bobbled off his right foot and goes back for Kieran Trippier. Trippier to Walker, and then back for Trippier again. Now to Declan Rice, right on the halfway line as he uh, lays it back for Kieran Trippier. 28 minutes gone, Scotland nil, England nil. Uh, tomorrow morning, Alan Brazil... And Rangers legend Ali McCoy's back on TalkSport Breakfast from six. Win or lose or draw tonight. Can't miss their reactions tomorrow on uh, TalkSport. If Scotland beat England, do you think they'll mention it? That's the big question. It's Phil Foden. Takes it forward towards halfway. Carl Walker has been uh, given plenty of attacking licence down that right flank and so far and has been played into some good positions, but England haven't quite been able to make the most of them. Walker's got it again now. Faced up by McGinn. He goes back behind square for Phillips. Phillips in turn to dunk, and he'll go all the way back for Ramsdale. Ramsdale just taking a touch, and then a second, and then the side footing it calmly out to the right-hand side of the penalty area where Dunk's ball forward wasn't the best. It's hit McGregor, but goes out of play for an England throw. Well, that was just excellent to watch from, from a Scotland point of view there. You know, I think, yeah, Phillips goes back to dunk. It's a poor pass. He turns and goes in behind straight away as a collective, the full team follow Callum McGregor, he's leading the lines putting the pressure on, defensive line stepping up all the distances between the lines were, were, were spot on and as a Scotland side have won 15 of the last 21 games which is a stunning record almost in a position to make that 16 out of 22 there with a 
A throw that was taken briskly back for Ramsdale. And as he controlled it, he was put under immediate pressure, but he was able to play out from the back relatively comfortably. And Gerhi then sends an excellent crossfield ball out towards Walker, and a lot of England's players gravitating through him at the moment on the far touch line, the England right, just in front of the north stand. Back it goes for Gerhi, down towards Trippier. Trippier taking a touch with his right and then passing it with his left. Back for Mark Gerhi again. Gerhi back towards Dunk. Dunk finding Phillips inside the centre circle, and now out towards Walker. The ball is stopped for a good couple of seconds before Walker just trying to draw Tierney into a challenge and uh, played it back dunk again to Gerhi and England have slowed this down uh, pretty much to walking pace again the ball literally stationary for a couple of seconds before dunk side did it for that time towards Phillips Phillips now towards Bellingham with the uh, quick feet in the midfield and he got past one but not Hickey and the free kick eventually is uh, given Scotland's way. And Gilmore beaten. Hickey came back, remedied the situation for Scotland. Bellingham then fouled Gilmore. And the free kick is taken by Scotland just inside their own half. We're half an hour through it. And it's nil now. What have you made of the opening half hour, Chris Wellerman? Yeah, well, I think Scotland at the minute, you know, they're having their, their moments. Still, I need a little bit more quality in that uh, attacking third. What I have to say is uh, Bellingham, Rashford and, and Foden, very, very compact. When, uh, and even when they're in possession of the ball, trying to find those little pockets. Scott will be able to bring it forward now down their left. Over on the far touch line, back he goes for McGregor. Nil-nil here on TalkSport, McGregor. Chance for Robertson to deliver. High ball just too high for Scott McTominay, waiting on the edge of the six-yard box. It's swung past everybody. And goes out of play for a throw on the England left. One of the games in England's group, Italy leading Ukraine now by two goals to nil in Milan. That's a Fratesi goal again, he scored them both. And actually ostensibly good news for England, uh, because it does mean if it stays that way, that England will only need one point in their next game at home to Italy, live on TalkSport on October the 17th, to make it through to Euro 2024. Scotland hoping to be there tonight, but Norway lead Georgia at the moment in the game. The Scots need to end as a draw. Foden, right-hand side of the penalty area. This one all square at the moment as well. Bellingham. Twisting, turning, little ball flick forward, Rashford back out towards Walker, drives it in and he's taken the deflection off Phil Foden to give England the lead. England with football inside the Scotland penalty area, five, six passes, Rashford potentially in an offside position as he linked up the play, but as Walker drove it in, Foden was onside and he's there to flick it in past gun and it's Scotland nil, England won. Yeah, the build-up was good, but once that ball arrived on the edge of the box, it was too many Scottish players just transfixed on the ball and not staying with runners, and uh, it was too easy. Foden come inside, into Bellingham, and then they just picked a, a simple pass through the back line, and too many players wrong side of the ball, and Walker's got an eye for a goal now and is looking to... Uh, whether he was shooting or whether he was passing, who knows? It's an excellent uh, reaction from Foden. He knows exactly where the goal is, and just kind of steals at goals there. You know, I think all the, the, the power was in the, the shot from Walker there. The death is he. Yeah, it's definitely a shot. It's an excellent touch from Phil Foden. When it was close to being offside, there were two defenders almost level with Marcus Rashford as he linked up the play. One of them stepped forward, Robertson was a little bit slow in getting forward. The VAR still having a look at it. That shows how tight it is. And the, the referees are going to give the signal for the game to restart. He does. The goal stands. Phil Foden. His fourth goal for his country. As he starts his first international since the World Cup quarter-final defeat to France. And one Manchester City player has found another. However, inadvertently, to give England a 1-0 lead. Scotland 0, England 1 on Talk Sport. Yeah, as I say, this, the little balls, either slid or long balls in behind, as long as England keep making those runs, I think they'll cause a, a problem to Scotland. I just want to touch on uh, Mark Gay here at the, at the moment. I think he had a decent game against Ukraine. I think he's played his way into the game very very composed in the game tonight you know comfortable on the ball knocks it around and done his defensive work pretty well Bellingham Rashford England looking for a quick second 
having broken the deadlock 13 minutes before half time. Trippier. Now play down the left hand side for Rashford. Rashford uh, getting a return ball, uh, protecting it well around the edge of the penalty area. Phillips joins in, he can chip it down towards Jude Bellingham. Bellingham taking it on towards the left hand side of the box, then twisting and turning, getting the better of the hickey, back heel flick, Foden into a dangerous area. And Robertson can't clear. Bellingham puts it away, and England have two in two and a half minutes. Scotland nil, England two. Yeah. Foden and Bellingham with a double strike. Jim, if truth be known, when England play at high revs and high tempo, little give and goes is too much for Scotland at this moment in time. And they put the ball in behind, good back heel, and in it come. And when the ball come in, panic ensued, bad clearance and an easy tapping. Yeah, Andy Robertson there, I think he'll just he'll be disappointed, just couldn't work his feet. Uh, he's just got to clear it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy clearance, just couldn't kind of get his feet right. But you look at Belling, uh, Jude Bellingham, he doesn't give the ball away. It's quality, he starts this little back heel, always on the move, anticipating it, can it break to him? And like you say, it's an excellent finish. It's coming in, just Andy Robertson, too much time there, I don't understand why he's trying to pack, he's just got to put the right foot through or put it out for a corner with the left. Yeah, he's, he's just got caught in two minds, I yeah. think. He's had a look at it and thought, hang on, I've got more time than I think I have. And then he saw out the corner of his eye Walker pressurising him and panicking to you. Well, Drew Bellingham, who scored five goals in his first four games for Real Madrid. That's just his second goal for his country. Adding to the one that he scored against Iran in the World Cup. A big moment for Drew Bellingham, a big three minutes for England. Scored twice in it. And lead here by two goals to nil at Hamden. Not good news for the Scots in Norway either. Their game against Georgia now 2-0. We'll get details in a moment. Scots looking for an immediate response here. Taking it on inside the penalty area. Tini trying to get it in. And then it was flicked away from Jay Adams. And there were appeals for a penalty, but perhaps optimistic ones. Referee Massa, though, has told Porches to wait before restarting play with the throw because the VAR is having a look at a potential penalty incident. Yeah, I don't think any of, of the players' reaction dictated there might be a, a handball there. I'll be surprised if it's given. Gahey, I think it, it, they're looking at. He's sort of gone to the ground and it's hit. It, right, I think it's his, his hand, maybe shoulder, who knows? No clown. I think the thing that will have saved him and the uh, VAR decision is no handball, no penalty. Uh, that he's put his arm down to break his fall, and that is stipulated in the, the laws of the game. Uh, that you were allowed to do that, and he wasn't trying to gain an advantage. He was accidental anyway, but he was just putting his left arm down there as he was falling to the ground to break his fall. It is a throw instead, which will be taken on the Scotland right-hand side. And a chance for Porteous to arch the back, launch a long one in towards the near post. Bellingham has cleared, out towards Kane, Kane playing it forward, the counter-attack is on here, England already have two, they're looking for a third, the ball is not square, but not with the quality that was necessary, Rashford had Foden and Bellingham to his right, he's played it behind the pair of them, and it should really have been three. Yeah, in my mind, as soon as he broke into the opposition's off, just keep running at goal, something will open up, and you'll get a little pullback eventually if he had to take it another five or ten yards. I felt that Bellingham had a lot of room for error if he just plays it uh, in behind uh, Henry there. You know, I think Rashford and would have had a lot of time. As soon as he cuts it back, you know, it takes the, the player out of the momentum and the, the stride. It remains. Scotland nil, England two. And that's getting used to that second Norway goal from Tuxbosi and Danta. Yeah, it's Norway to Georgia nil. Just over 10 minutes before the break. Antonio Nusa, this young 18-year-old, only a second appearance for Norway, causing havoc on the left-hand side. Lovely jinking run and a pull back to the edge of the area. Crashed home by the left foot of Arsenal's Martin Odegaard. Complete control for the Norwegians. Norway to Georgia nil. What means from a Scottish perspective is that it's not going to happen tonight. Of course really doesn't mean that it's not going to happen at all far from it just a question of when not if that you would imagine with Scotland having 15 points in the first five games Tierney bringing it forward now for the Scots looking to try and get themselves back into this Adam slightly mistiming his jump as he tried to get in between Gerhi and Dunk and it's come off the Brighton man and he's able to get it back to Aaron Ramsdale Scotland nil, England 2 
on TalkSport in Stuart East. Yeah, speaking with Chris uh, earlier on today, it, he was painting a picture that, you know, whenever the ball's in wide areas, it, it'll be coming in with quality, with numbers in there. And we've probably not seen that as much from Scotland when they've had it in advanced areas. No, definitely not. You know, I think there as well, you know, it's there's, there's numbers in the box, but just that final pass, that final decision, that final bit of movement just needs to be better. But at, at the minute, you know, not seeing a lot of the ball, when they do get into the attacking area, you just expect with the quality that they've shown time and time again that they can do it. The free kick has gone Scotland's way. As a foul by Declan Rice, he's caught Scott McTominay and he was concerned. He's just indicating that he thinks that he's actually caught him with his elbow accidentally and that the referee should have a look at McTominay to make sure he's OK. Uh, but he is, he's back on his feet, he's going to be able to continue. The other game is Scotland's group, Spain three up uh, in that match in Granada at home to Cyprus. Spain three, Cyprus nil, Norway two, Georgia nil. And the other game's in England's group at the uh, moment, Malta uh, trailing 100 North Macedonia by a golden nil. Italy lead Ukraine 2 nil. But Tomney's OK, he's back on his feet, Billy Gilmore's got the ball. And the ball is then worked all the way back to... Angus Gunn, who will clear it, right-footed towards halfway. And England win the aerial challenge very effectively with uh, Lewis Dunk. He's a side to clean sheet in his first uh, international appearance five years ago against the USA. Clean sheet against their name so far. England leading with those uh, two goals in three minutes through Foden and Bellingham just after the half-hour mark. Scotland on the front foot here with Hickey. Hickey had a... It's about before signing for Brentford in uh, Italian football. The ball played through towards uh, Che Adams. Adams almost showing too much of it to Bellingham. He did well to uh, like the first challenge that came. It was a poor second challenge that came in from Phillips. And it turned him a yellow card. Stuart? Uh, as I say, it looked a little bit late from Phillips. I think he's just caught in the referee's brandished the yellow. And in fact... I think by Phillips' reaction, he's suggesting he thinks he's got the ball. But the one thing that worries me a little bit, well, I, I think it's a booking. He, he's gone to ground and a bit loose. The one thing that worries me a little bit is Bellingham was quick to get involved in the pushing and shoving straight away, and there's no need for that, you know? He, he likes a tackle, and if you're going to go into major tournaments, liking a tackle and getting involved in pushing and shoving, you're going to soon find yourself out the game. Well, Jack Hendry took exception to uh, Jude Bellingham's reaction and there was uh, a bit of pushing and shoving going on after the ball as well I think they both earned that yellow cards for their part in that Porteous and Walker uh, just for a moment eyeballing each other from very close range as well uh, but just the three yellow cards shown uh, in that incident by Davide Massa incidentally, uh, for all that this is the oldest international fixture in world football there's never been a red card in a Scotland-England game but hey, the night is young I think the levels of tolerance some years ago <laughs> was a little bit <laughs> yeah. higher than they are now, it's fair to say. Certainly from the pictures we saw of that 1872 encounter, yeah. Wouldn't get away with some of that now. Robertson playing it inside the area. And a defensive header by Rice has given Scotland their first corner of the match. Yeah, I think it was actually Dunk who managed to get there before Rice, I think. Yeah, it was, and I'll tell you what, that's twice now he's defended the middle of his goal particularly well. So Scotland with the first corner, which will be taken on the uh, right flank. Porteous has spotted the ball down, it's McGinn that is uh, going to come forward to take it. Does have the option of a short one towards McGregor, Foden keeping an eye on that, fired inside the box, took a first touch in the near post area off a Scottish player, but Adams couldn't find a teammate, England hammer it away. And it goes out for a throw much nearer halfway, which is taken very quickly by Andy Robertson. Scored against England when the two sides met here in Glasgow back in 2014. Scotland on the front foot with Hickey. His ball inside the area, travelled a long way, and it's bobbled off Phillips. But the referee saw a Scotland push. And it will be a free kick that England will take inside their own penalty area. 90 seconds to half-time. Here on TalkSport is Scotland nil, England 2. Yeah, well, much better quality from Scotland in wide areas. I think great corner in from McGinn. Beats the first man. You know, I think it comes off the, the fire, Che Adams. But again, England alive to it. They can defend Hickey. Again, asking that question. Beating the first man. But as you've got to keep your hands down in the in the box. Referee was positioned well. More live football coming up for you over the course of the weekend. Of course, starting Friday night 
No, I've uh, talked sport two action Southampton against Leicester in the championship. Jay Adams are likely to be playing in that against his old or hometown club. And so on the books of Leicester as a, a real youngster. So we'll be playing against them on Friday. It's an 8 p.m. kickoff over on Talksport 2. And then Saturday, Wolves against Liverpool, exclusive on Talksport. Game day exclusive with Faker others in the chair. Sam Matterface and Martin Keown talking through the action from Molyneux. Wolves against Liverpool build up at 11 ahead of a 12.30 kickoff. Saturday on Talksport. Here's Declan Rice bringing the ball forward and finding Foden. 30 seconds to half time. There will be a, a bit of time to be added on with the. VAR check, couple of goal celebrations and the uh, the skirmish a few moments ago, so it will be two or three minutes, you would think. Gurhi's got possession, and he'll chip it right-footed out to the far touchline for Kyle Walker. Walker controlling it, plays it back to the edge of his own penalty area. Back for Ramsdale, and Ramsdale's slightly heavy first touch, just to pique the interest of uh, Shea Adams for a moment. England uh, able to get it through the midfield. Rashford playing it back, just the one extra minute. Here's Harry Kane. Kane on halfway, switching, changing the direction and working it out towards the England right-hand side. Slightly unorthodox control from Carl Walker, leaning over it and sort of pushing it to the ground with his chest before uh, getting back off one knee and uh, regaining possession. Gerhi goes back for Dunk. Dunk forward for Declan Rice. Nice 10 yards inside his own half as... Well, a couple of Scottish players making life difficult for him. Gilmore just gave him a little shove, but England to maintain possession and go back for Ramsdale. Just a question of seeing the remaining seconds off the clock here. And Ramsdale's not going to do anything until Adams comes out and engages. And then Ramsdale looks long, looking for Kane, finding him. He's got the better of Porteous. Play four towards Bellingham. Bellingham towards the edge of the penalty area here. It's a chance for England to make it three right at the end of the half. And Foden's crossfield ball didn't quite pick out Kane. He was just coming into the six-yard box but couldn't get there in time. And when England have been able to push forward, they've been able to unlock this Scottish defence with relative ease as the half has gone on. England with plenty of possession in the opening 25 minutes, found a way through just after the half-hour mark with Bowden. He was then instrumental in Jude Bellingham scoring a second three minutes later. And at the break, it's Scotland nil. England too. Well, as the players make their way off, you know, right at the start of this evening, the bagpipes were loud and proud, but since then, Scotland have piped right down. England have been on top. No efforts on goal for Scotland, nothing on target for them. And even though they've had a fair bit of possession, it has been England all the way. And of course, they lead by two goals to nil. And Stuart Pearce, do you think the England fans will be happy with Gareth Southgate at this moment in time? No, too defensive, too negative. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Maguire's not played well. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. And Henderson should never start. It's ridiculous. It really is. Listen, Aid, they'll be absolutely delighted with this performance. I think when England have gone into high revs, playing through the thirds, little interchange and one-twos, it's been very, very difficult to, for Scotland to stop and, and deal with them and whatever. They've looked very good in their attacking play. Possession's been good, but the difference between this game and Ukraine, we're looking to play forward. We've played it over the top with good runs and slid balls through with good runs as well. Uh, I was a little frustrated at nil-nil. Listen, it, a goal changes everything for me. I'm that basic uh, an England fan, but I was a little bit frustrated. They were slowing things right down, going backwards, 20-yard passes when they could have turned and gone forward. But is that part of the game plan? That's what's led to us being 2-0 up. I... I I'm not on the inside of it. I don't know whether they're saying, well, hang on, if we do that, we draw the opposition onto us and then we wait the opportunity to play the pass. And sometimes I think it's on more often than not. I'm like you in that camp, you know. We watched the game in Ukraine and I thought the ball could have gone forward more often than not to hurt the opposition and we didn't play it. Tonight, I think it's totally different. I think some of our interchange, and there was once we swept almost the length of the pitch with so much great interchange and pace and power and precision well before the game Chris well my former Scotland striker told us how Gaza made him cry Foden and Bellingham making you cry tonight what's going wrong for Scotland because they've done nothing yeah they haven't they haven't I think it's is is how good England have been you know I think that front four I'm looking at Kane you know the positions that he picks up how strong he is like Portis is he's not even going to go and try and, and, and win his aerial duels he's allowing Kane to take it down you can't give a player of that quality that time you know, Bellingham, uh, 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 Rashford and, and Foden, again, they're so compact, they come so close together, and the movement, 
it really kind of nullifies the, the quality of, of Gilmore and, and, and McGregor and you don't really want to kind of push one of your centre-backs out so so difficult to defend against and then as soon as you do step out of position that quality little ball with weight of passing behind and it's, you have to then defend for, for your lives and it's been nowhere near good enough I'm going to ask Chris a question here because he, he covers Scotland a lot more than I do do you think Scotland have, have almost got caught up in the situation if they were taking a team on of England's ability and rank would they be a lot more cautious than they are in a game like tonight with all the euphoria that's surrounding it well it's important that you don't play the occasion you know and I think that the, the players have got to kind of buy into that they've shown that they don't crumble under pressure but you called it within the first couple of minutes Stuart you said that giving England far too much respect you cannot sit off players you've got to go in the front for high intensity force the error and then grow into the game from there and Scotland haven't done that uh, can you see Scotland getting back into this at all well, I just want something. I want something. I want them. I, I want a chance. I want an effort and goal. If they get the next goal, then you never know. But England are completely in control. They are. It is two nil to England. Foden and Bellingham with the goals. Uh, we'll talk about that little skirmish where Bellingham got booked. Stuart made a great point about that uh, in-game commentary. But live on Talksport, England very much in control in this so-called friendly, the 150th anniversary heritage match at half time on Talksport. It's Scotland nil, England two. <laughs> Kick off on TalkSport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus be gambleaware.org. The Monopoly game is back at McDonald's. And guess what? It's still twice as nice. Because with double peel, you can peel on pack. Then peel again on the McDonald's app to win prizes like brand new mini electrics, lovely McDonald's food, HP Omen gaming laptops, two e-holiday vouchers, a thousand pounds in cash, plus tons of other incredible prizes. 18 plus UK only. Selected items. Subjects and serving times and availability. End 17th of October. Game plan price claims may require McDonald's app. See mcdrules.co.uk. The rewards points went in two by two. Hurrah. 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 The rewards points went in two by two. Hurrah. 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 The rewards points went in two by two, by two when you're shopping and you're fueled too. And they all went onto your card so you'll get lovely rewards. Enjoy double BP me rewards points on everything from filling your tank to filling your basket. Plus get double rewards points on BP Ultimate Fuels with active technology. Hurrah. BP, here for all of life's journeys. T's and C's apply. Available at participating dealer-owned BP stores only. For details, see bpmerewards.co.uk slash double points. It's just you versus your mates with Le bon, the quality new football predictor app. With Le bon, you predict the results for the weekend's big games, invite your mates, then add a few quid to the in-app pot. The mate with the most points at the end of the weekend wins the cash kitty. Simple. With Le bon, it's just you versus your mates, wherever you are. Download the Le Bon app today and get your mates on it this weekend. Le Bon. L-E-B-O-M. 18 plus BeGambleAware.org. Winning subject to 10% transaction fee. DZ4X isn't just any all-electric SUV. It's powered by 25 years of electric innovation. Experience the freedom of a 24-hour test drive. And enjoy 0% APR over 36 months when you order. Available on PCP over 36 months when financed through Toyota Financial Services by 2nd of October. Optional final payment. Indemnities may be required. Test drive subject to availability. See website. Conditions apply. Freedom. Experience the power of magic at Walt Disney World Resort in Florida in summer 2024. Book selected packages by the 9th of November and get up to $2,100 dining and merchandise credit on two-week stays. A 14-day ticket for the price of seven. Plus a Disney gift card worth up to $200. Book now at disneypackages.co.uk. Selected 2024 arrivals and Disney resorts. $2,100 credit based on 14 nights stay in August and September. Conditions and exclusions apply. At Betfred, we want betting to be safe, so we have a range of tools to help. You can set a deposit limit to control your spending. Reality checks are there to remind you how long you've been playing. And if you need to take a break, you can set a timeout whenever you like. For more help, speak to our shop staff or visit betfred.com. Betting should be fun and friendly, so please remember, gamble safely. 18 plus, begambleaware.org. Now, brown the mints, piquito peppers, cumin, oregano, oh, wonderful. Next, a splash of... Seriously? You don't need to splash out and all that. To give your chilli con carne full-on flavour, just add a Coleman's recipe mix to whatever you're cooking. They're a spice rack in a pack. For great nosh, for less dosh, cook with Coleman's recipe mixes. Full-on flavour. Talk about a blast from the past. 
Ah, the 1990s, when McDonald's started using 100% British and Irish beef in our burgers. Back when you actually had to leave the house and head to the arcade if you wanted to play a game with your mates. What a time. It's just one of the little changes McDonald's have been constantly making to the way we source and produce our food over the years. McDonald's. Change a little, change a lot. At Crown Trade, we asked painters and decorators, would you get a tattoo of a rival team if it meant you won the league? <laughs> Maybe. No chance. Yeah, if it was on my backside. At least there's one thing they do agree on. There's no better paint than Crown. Crown. Crown Trade. It's so easy to use. 97% of painters and decorators who use Crown Trade agree. There's no better paint. It's not just paint. It's personal. Survey of 187 professional decorators. Adi Bayarek and Fenway here, ambassador for Bet UK. And in case you didn't know, I'm kind of a big deal. But at Bet UK, an even bigger deal is gambling responsibly. It's important to keep yourself safe when betting. That's why you can find a range of tools on the Bet UK app and website. You can set deposit limits, schedule reality checks, and set timeouts to help you stay in control. Always gamble responsibly at Bet UK. 18 plus, please gamble responsibly. Kickoff International Special. On Talk Sport. Well, tough job for the uh, PA announcer here at Hamden ha- at half time, trying to rouse the crowd. Just gone through a long list of inventions and then asked the crowd where they were all invented. Scotland, the answer. It was a little bit half hearted from the Hamden crowd because it is Scotland nil, England two. Second half coming up live on Talk Sport. Uh, a game that also affects Scotland is Norway against Georgia in Oslo. Let's check out what's happening in the first half of Talk Sport. Ian Danta. Norway 2, Georgia nil at the break. Scotland, look, they'll have to wait until next month to secure safe passage to the Euro finals. As the drawn scoreline they craved here to confirm qualification tonight now looks unlikely. Norway firmly in control. It was a quiet opening quarter, and the home fans were just starting to show signs of frustration when Norway hit the front on 25 minutes. 18-year-old Antonio Nusa on his competitive debut for Norway. Some lovely wing play down the left. His deep cross found, yep, you, you guessed it, Erling Haaland. Perfect cross at the far post and his firm header six yards out did the rest. It was 2-0 just over 10 minutes before the break. Noosa again causing havoc with a jinking run into the box and a clever pullback to the edge of the area for Arsenal's Martin Odegaard to crash the ball home left-footed. For Georgia, their star man Kvaratskhelia has had two weaving runs at the back-pedalling Norwegian defence, but on both occasions, his final shot inside the box was blocked. Odegaard's had more chances to extend the Norwegian lead. It looks a long way back for Georgia here. At the break, Norway 2, Georgia 0. Yeah, uh, Scotland need that to be a draw. That doesn't look like it's going to happen. Elsewhere, in England's group, Group C, it's Italy 2, Ukraine 1. Yarmolenko pulling one back for Ukraine just before half-time. And it's Malta 0, North Macedonia 2. It stays like that. Those results stay like that. England need a point versus Italy at Wembley next month to qualify. Let's get the half-time odds with Ladbrokes. Odds update on TalkSport with Ladbrokes. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus, begambleware.org. Well, England are two up here at Hampden. Scotland are 125 to 1 for the win. The draw 25 to 1, and England 40 to 1 on. That's the latest odds with Labrooks. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. Odds update on Talksport with Ladbrokes. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. Well, some wonderful stuff on Talksport today. The breakfast show, magnificent as ever. Ali McCoy, Stanley Townsend on great form, picking a combined all time England, Scotland. Uh, 11. No Gazza in there. Just left me astounded, though. Um, David Moyes was also on the breakfast show. Uh, brilliant uh, appearance from him. Ange Postacoglu, another Premier League manager, the Spurs boss. He was on uh, with White and Jordan this morning as well. And then on Drive, fantastic show from the boys. Building up to this commentary here, they had a, a caller, a Celtic fan, who told them that Billy Gilmore right now is better than Jude Bellingham. Evidence to the contrary my friends but always entertaining Uh, and on breakfast uh, tomorrow some great guests with Alan Brazil and Ali McCoy Sam Allardyce former England manager Phil Yagioka former England defender they will be on the breakfast show tomorrow the whole thing gets underway at six Uh, they asked me to go on at nine o'clock I said if England win yes but if Scotland win do you think I'm going on with McCoy and Brazil absolutely no chance so uh, it looks for the moment like I will be joining them Uh, it'll be live from Loch Lomans at uh, 9am tomorrow morning looking forward to that 
Um, let's bring back in the former England captain, Stuart Pearce. You mentioned during commentary that moment where Jude Bellingham lost his head, and it was worse than people might think because there was a foul from uh, Declan Rice. He got booked for that. Bellingham went in. Hendry got involved as well. They were both booked. And Jude Bellingham then, his head was in such a crazed space, Stuart. He didn't have a clue what he was doing at the free kick. Kieran Trippier had to leave the man he was marking, go to Jude Bellingham and point where he needed to stand at the free kick. England can't afford to have players losing their heads when they're leading in a match like this. No, Jude's the sort of individual that ends up getting in a sort of pushing match and a, a sort of late skirmish. He's, he probably had about two or three prior to that. He's been booked. And to get involved in stuff like that, OK, tonight he's got involved in it. What worries me, you go to a major tournament, you get a little bit excited, you come up against the referee that isn't very tolerant, and all of a sudden, that's your lot. You're off the pitch and England are coming home early, and that can't be acceptable. Yeah, we've seen that before from England as well. I must tell you, on the touchline right now, Harry Maguire is stripped to his England kit going through his paces Stuart it looks very much like he will be coming on for the second half yeah and, and to be honest with you I thought that he might end up um, playing tonight to be fair I think he needs the game experience excuse me I'm eating a meat pie at this moment in time <laughs> can I have one <laughs> Chris Awellamo let's talk about that error from Andy Robertson it, it's inexplicable really for a player of his quality to literally pass the ball to arguably the best player in the world right now, Jude Bellingham. Incredible from Robertson. Yeah, he'll be, he'll be disappointed, Adrian. You know, disappointed. He, he was caught, he was caught in two mains. He won't sleep tonight because of he it, had really. more time than what he thought. It's just a reaction when it's came off the the, the, the most offensive England and England player. When he's turned, he's under pressure from Walker and he's just he's, he's stabbed at it. You know, as composed as he usually is, just you either make a decision, I've got to clear it, there's no time to take a touch and try and play, and he should just put the right foot through it, clear the area, or put the left through, foot through it, out for a corner. Now, you've seen the way that he looked up to the skies because it's a massive error. And in a game that, OK, is very much second best, but at 1-0, it's still very much, you know, there is a possibility, but England are in so much control at the minute. We just need to do something a little bit different. And Steve Clark, you know, he's... We have, we have quality in depth there can be players come on and, and change it up well I'm wondering what tactically he can do because you want to play five at the back to stop England uh, having so much space out wide and creating those chances but then you need players going forward to get back in the game and that could open up the spaces for England well yes definitely you know but you have to take the risk you know, it's a, as a friendly, albeit the, the old enemy, as, as they say. I think Lyndon Dykes is a little bit more direct. You know, not not fight balls, but quality up. Because she had him speeding off, off scraps at the minute, taking too many touches. Not really, his strength is, is, is playing on the shoulder, getting him behind. We've not really had that quality or enough time on the ball to, to affect England in that way. So we'll, I think we've got to be a little bit more direct now and have the likes of John McGinn and, and, and McTominay picking up those second balls. I want a, an opinion from you as a Scotland man, a Scotland fan, a former Scotland player. When all the Scotland fans realised Maguire was warming up and was likely to come on because he was stripped of the England kit, the, they kind of cheered a bit. It gave them a little bit of a lift. And I don't know it's disrespectful to Harry Maguire, but that's how they felt. As, can you understand why Scotland fans are thinking that? And will the Scotland players be thinking that as well? No, not at all. We, we all know that... Harry Maguire, even even very limited uh, game time that he has for, for England, he doesn't he doesn't put too many he doesn't make too many mistakes, you know. And, and a game that they're in complete control, if anything, he's, he's solid, he's a leader, and he's another threat from from, from corners as well. So he's, he, he can go out and, and definitely uh, quite in the the, the kind of the, the laughs or whatever the cheers that he's getting uh, by putting the ball in the back of the net. Simple as. Well, England made their way back onto the field. McTominay and Maguire had a long chat on the pitch as the players inspected the pitch on arrival. It's very rare they're out there at the same time, actually, before the game, but they were Scotland and England. And they've got a lot in common. They're probably asking each other when they're going to play for United. McTominay's made two sub-appearances. Came on, coming on the 85th and 88th minute. Maguire came on in the 67th minute against Arsenal for Manchester United. So getting more game time for country than club these days those two. Scotland are back out on the pitch as well. They've got to do something very special in this second half. It's Scotland nil, England 2. Second half on TalkSport with the former Scotland striker Chris Awellamo, former England captain Stuart Pearce and your England commentator on TalkSport, Jim Proudfoot. Now it's an age thing, but am I allowed Chris Awellamo as an Englishman to like Baccarat? And yes sir, I can boogie. Is that okay? <laughs> it is an age thing. <laughs> 
I was five, I can still remember it very clearly. Uh, a change for England. Maguire for Gurhi is the uh, change for this second half. So Harry Maguire will be partnering Lewis Dunk. And I would imagine that's a premeditated one as long as the situation of the game uh, decreed that it could be made for Gareth Southgate. Three halves of football for Mark Gurhi, three halves of football for Harry Maguire over the course of these two games. We're back underway. That's the only change that we've seen so far tonight. England going from left to right in this second half. Scotland defending the east stand here at Hampden Park. And they've got an early goal kick lining up with gun and goal. Back five of Hickey, Porteous, Henry, Tierney, Robertson. Gilmore and McGregor, McTominay and McGinn and Adams. England have Ramsdale in goal. And then Walker, Dunk, Maguire and Trippier. Phillips, Rice and Bellingham, Foden, Kane and Rashford. Scotland coming into this had only conceded once here at Hampden in the last six games, which was a goal scored by Ireland's John Egan. But they shipped two in a three-minute spell in the first half. It is Scotland nil, England two here on Talk Sport. Jim, I can't get the vision out of my head of you in 1978 wearing a pair of Vince Les on the dance floor to back her up. <laughs> I really can't. As a five-year-old, it was a lively nursery school that I went to. Uh, the ball is out of play for a throw, which will be taken over on the far touchline. What an education, as you can tell. 1970s music. Tick. <laughs> Maths and English, yeah, not so much. Uh, the ball played for by Scotland. Adams trying to hold it up, waiting for um, McGinn to be able to play it into his path. It didn't happen, and England will be able to play it forward. Foden is almost the perfect ball for Bellingham's run. Porteous in the end can mop up before it got as far as Rashford, but Foden just trying to lay one in almost lazily to the outside of the left boot to curve it. And to get it to die into the path of Bellingham, he very nearly got it right. Ball's gone out of play for a throw, which will be taken on the England right-hand side. We're two minutes into the second half, and here are the thoughts of the former Scotland international, Chris Wallerman. Well, what I do have to say is Angus Gunn, I think his distribution is, is excellent, always looks to try and play. If nothing else is on, with quality, goes from back to front. John McGinn there again, just has a look around, knows that he's in time and space, and still tries to flick it with the head to, to Robertson. Take it on the chest, get us up, get us up the pitch and take it from there Maguire and it's gone back for Ramsdale excuse me and then Phillips can bring it forward Bellingham uh, for Calvin Phillips again and now towards Walker who uh, just dropped his left shoulder for a moment and threatened to play the ball one side of Robertson ended up going the other England have maintained possession relatively easily here's Harry Maguire again this is the first of uh, England's last 13 games in which Maguire hasn't started but We'll get 45 minutes tonight, and his name now being sung by the England fans away to our left. I think Rashford felt he was fouled. Play is allowed to continue. And Scotland have possession on halfway. They've gone back to Jack Hendry. Hendry down the left-hand touchline for Kieran Tierney. Tierney uh, working it forward into the feet of uh, McGinn. McGinn trying to turn. Left-hand side of the area, and he uh, unrifled one that might have just been creeping in the bottom right-hand corner. It then hit Adams and spun across the goal the other way, but well won. And out of play for a goal kick. It's Scotland nil, England two. Yeah, I think Ada at half time was, was asking Chris, uh, can Scotland get in the game? If it, England drop off the pace a little bit, it, it will happen. There is no doubt. You've got to keep your, if you've got your uh, ascendancy in a game, keep your foot on their throat all the time and try and get that third goal because the game changes very, very quickly. It's Lewis Dunk that's got it on the edge of his own penalty area. Play four for uh, Calvin Phillips, and Phillips uh, just lost it for a moment as Andy Robertson very quickly applied the pressure. Phillips wasn't sure where the ball was between his feet. It's gone out of play for a throw, which will be taken on the uh, Scotland left hand side. Foden comes across and almost uh, gives uh, a, a consolatory high five to Calvin Phillips, who put his hands on his head for a moment. He was so frustrated that he'd given the ball away. It's given Scotland the chance to launch a long throw inside the penalty area here from Tierney. Helped on and cleared by Bellingham. Right footy shot goes over the bar, but the first attempt that we've seen from Scotland, Billy Gilmore it was that met it. Came to him about 20 yards out round the edge of the D, but leaning back, he couldn't keep it down. Well, from a long throw, I think the ball bounces right on the six-yard line, central of goal as well, but again, 
England defensively anticipate that clearly danger not the best of clearance but a poor touch from Billy Gilmore right at the edge of the box had to kind of wrap his right foot around it and just couldn't hit the, get the accuracy on, with his shot but better from Scotland Bellingham helping it on through the midfield for Kane Kane who has scored the very late equaliser the last time the two sides met here in Scotland and the game that England led going in with the five minutes to go and they conceded twice and Kane rescued the situation that means that England have arrived here in Glasgow tonight having not lost on Scottish soil since 1985 ball headed for by Maguire at the back for England Hendry mops up Gets it back for his goalkeeper, Gunn, in all yellow tonight. And then an offside flag is up as Gunn played it forward. Very firm aerial challenge from Maguire, which has left one of the Scotland players. I think it's McTominay on the deck. Uh, but he's come back from an offside position, so when play restarts, it will be an England free kick on halfway street. Yeah, Maguire done extremely well there. A couple of good challenges from him and a good header. Obviously... Uh comes on every time he puts a white shirt on he don't let down and every time he puts a white shirt on he plays under pressure so you've got to give him credit for that there's a, almost a fish of excitement from the Scotland fans whenever he has the ball at his feet he's winning a 59th cap for his country today and played 200 minutes more for England than he did in the Premier League last season and he's um, going to have more minutes for England on the clock this season than he has for Manchester United as well Kane picking it up and he's uh, almost played a, a delicious ball on the turn out towards the uh, left hand side for Trippier uh, Rice uh, getting it back and Scotland half cleared Dunk will find Maguire again just relishing the pressure you sense and playing the simple ball back for Aaron Ramsdale Ramsdale rolling the studs of his right boot over the top of the ball before Slaying it back outside the penalty area for Maguire. Most of just having their own individual game for a moment. Now Adams comes and joins in, playing as a piggy in the middle for a moment. And then Rice, four towards Bellingham. England playing through the press, but they've lost it. Scotland getting it back. McGinn are trying to help it back towards Gilmore, around the edge of the penalty area. England have got their shake back. Now it comes from McGregor. McGregor's ball in, Walker with a diving header into a central area. The dunk did well to get something on it and steer it further clear. And then Foden in a wider position can win it back for England. And Kane will put his foot on the ball, turn away from Gilmore. And England will be able to play their way out pretty neatly. They did well in a, an awkward cul de sac there, England, to get out of trouble. They certainly did. And you've got to admire Harry Kane. He, he, he gets the ball when you think someone's coming up behind it he's not seen him and he just plays his way out his sense of what's around him is fantastic he'll either buy a foul or he'll get out of a really tight spot and uh, keep possession for his team yeah, on the other hand good offensive play as well Robertson breaking his neck to get in behind and it was a it was a great ball from Callum McGregor cut out well by, by Walker picking up second balls as well Scotland you know the, the tempo has has risen so the quality uh, is, is, has been better as well just that final pass uh, can, 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 can be better a reminder that if Norway against Georgia is a draw tonight Scotland are through to the Euros Norway currently lead it by two goals to nil Spain two Cyprus nil of the other game in that group Italy two Ukraine one Malta nil North Macedonia two in England's group now those results stay the same England will only need a draw at home to Italy next month to go through you'll hear it live on Talk Sport Foden down towards Walker gets towards the byline doesn't wrap his right foot around it to deliver first time plays it back instead for Kane good ball in from Kane decent defensive header from the retreating Tierney now Bellingham's taking a tumble inside the box but is uh, just getting back to his feet now Rashford I beg your pardon now it comes back through the midfield once more and England have it very deep with Maguire as the crowd will tell you I don't think he's misplaced the pass yet since coming on the ironic Olays can come out for him but as I mentioned a moment ago he's dealing with the pressure just fine at the moment they fall into the feet of his club teammate Rashford gets it back again now it comes down towards Dunk Dunk down towards uh, Kyle Walker. The England fans are having their view of uh, Harry Maguire, a much more positive one, uh, suggesting that uh, he's got Scotland exactly where he wants them or something like that. Here he is again. 
10 yards outside the box. Play forward into the feet of Marcus Rashford. It's a great turn from Rashford. He's taken two Scotland players out of the picture in the process. Down towards the left-hand side for Trippier. And Foden making his way towards the edge of the D. Ball is played out towards the left for Jude Bellingham. And Bellingham are just hoping to feather it into the path of Kieran Trippier. Hit it twice as hard as he needed and he's gone out of play for a throw that'll be taken over on the Scotland right hand side but 10 minutes into the second half Chris not too many positive signs from Scotland's point of view of being able to get themselves back into this as yet yeah I think the only success Scotland's having is because England have taken their foot off the, the pedal a little bit and, and, and defending a little bit deeper uh, I think every they can go forward uh, anytime they want with quality and Scotland are, are scrambling a little bit so it just has to be a little bit better in possession for Scotland you know as soon as uh, the England lose the ball they, they hunt the ball down uh, that front four five six uh, go and get it really put Scotland under pressure they don't have the quality to get their head up and, and, and keep possession now I said before the game about Gilmore and, and McGregor being so important they've not got that time they've not got on the, the ball nowhere near enough Scottish changes are imminent and Dykes and Christie are the two players who are getting ready for action down below us uh, meantime a free kick to England uh, which will be taking about 15 yards inside the Scotland half and Carl Walker stands over him and he's worked it back towards Declan Rice Rice in the Scottish half of the centre circle when he picks up possession goes back inside his own half for Dunk and here's Maguire again and another well executed pass and so too that from Trippier down the left hand side of the penalty area flag again stays down for now but might subsequently come up an opportunity for England to deliver Bellingham trying to work the angle into play with Rashford Rashford out towards Trippier Marcus Rashford has it again now Trippier on the left hand touchline those two trying to get the better of a two ball of Hickey and McTominay uh, end up getting a throw which will be taken level with the edge of the Scottish box it's 2-0 England as it has been for the uh, last 20 minutes or so, Foden and Bellingham, the England goal scorers tonight. Kane making his way out towards the left hand touchline to get the ball into feet and then uh, shanking it and straight back out of play for another throw. When Harry Kane historically seemingly drops deeper and deeper with every England game that he plays, Stuart, but he has been really deep tonight almost a, 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 an orthodox false nine as opposed to a centre forward yeah yeah so I think he just enjoys getting a touch of the ball and the one thing with him when he does drop deep and get hold of the ball you know he's going to hit a raking switch of play or play the ball in behind he plays the ball that I think he would want as a centre forward almost Maguire finding Ramsdale Ramsdale more than halfway towards his third clean sheet in four England appearances Porteous at the other end for Scotland. Down towards Tierney. Now the double Scotland change will be made at the next break in play. Uh, I imagine it might be Adams who will come off uh, for Dykes. It'll be interesting to see who Christie comes on for. Billy Gilmore of Brighton in the midfield to find McGregor, Celtic legend. Now down towards Porteous. Porteous four towards halfway. McTominay has lost it to Bellingham who can turn and then feed Rashford. And Bellingham will make his way towards the edge of the penalty area with Rashford in possession out towards the left-hand touchline. Trippi has made a good run forward on the overlap for him. Rashford tried to supply Bellingham with a return. Ball down the inside left channel on the side of the penalty area. Bellingham then just couldn't get on the end of Rashford's ball as he tried to win it back. Kane might be able to make something happen and fires one narrowly over the bar after a deflection that the officials haven't seen and a goal kick has been given uh, but clearly it should have been a corner yeah big deflection there first time round I've, in all honesty I'm not sure I saw it but when I watched the replay again it was uh, a fair old size deflection there just uh, off the knee so, the first change, we'll see uh, Shea Adams withdrawn for Scotland. So, number 10 coming off, number 9, Lyndon Dykes coming on, and Ryan Christie will come on as well for Scotland. And he's going to be replacing Billy Gilmore. Chris, your thoughts on those two Scotland changes? Yeah, again, I think uh, Ryan Christie coming on. I think McTominay now just kind of drops back. Ryan Christie kind of takes that, that kind of more offensive role. Lyndon Dykes is a fantastic outlet with the, you know, he'll go and he'll win his aerial duels. He, he, he brings other players in. It's just important that it's 
when we get our head up it's about quality going into him and then can we pick up the second balls or gambling in behind he's got to win those headers for us and, and, and make it stick well as I mentioned earlier Shea Adams uh, back in action Friday night for Southampton along with uh, his fellow international teammate Stuart Armstrong they take on Leicester it's live on TalkSport 2 Friday night from 8 o'clock at St Mary's Saturday Wolves against Liverpool is a game day exclusive 12.30 the game starts 11 o'clock the build-up on TalkSport. Manchester United against Brighton in the Premier League. Exclusive on TalkSport 2. It's not on UK TV. Three o'clock, it kicks off on TalkSport 2. Saturday afternoon. And then also, a couple of tasty games from the Championship. Cardiff-Swansea, Saturday tea time on TalkSport 2. And Sunday lunchtime, Millwall leads. Some fantastic games over the course of the weekend for you. On the Talk Sport Network, we'll bring you nearly 500 games over the course of the season, more than anybody else. 2 0 with half an hour to go in this one in England's favour as they look to make it seven wins in 10 against the Scotland side. have only lost one in 10 coming into this, which was a friendly defeat away to Turkey. And Steve Clark has galvanised Scotland, and what a fantastic job he's done with the resources he's uh, inherited brilliant record that he's had bad days have been few and far between but they haven't really done themselves justice tonight Chris I'm, I'm sure that uh, as an Englishman you won't mind me saying that it's a fair comment that they've played much much better than this in the recent past no they, they have you know, you're spot on Jim even the likes of there Aaron Hickey uh, Christy makes an excellent one it's just that weight of pass that quality of pass as well the idea was there but you know they've been executing them perfectly uh, in the last few games as well and, and getting opportunities at the attacking end so yeah it's, it has been disappointing there's still time still plenty of time remember two goals in the last five minutes went Scotland's way the last time that uh, England were in Glasgow Dunk back for Ramsdale Ramsdale controlling the ball just outside the uh, edge of the six yard box and again just waiting for a um, some movement from one of the Scotland players who was trying to entice Lyndon Dykes to come and put a challenge on so he could get the ball round him. Dunk under pressure from Christie. Goes back for Ramsdale. Now down towards Lewis Dunk again. A couple of yards in for the right-hand touchline. In towards Phillips, who receives the ball on the half turn. Gets it away from Ryan Christie. And Maguire chips it. A superbly which is actually a slightly awkward bounce in front of Trippier that made it slightly harder to bring under control although Rashford ends up with the ball at his feet and has held off three and almost played the defence splitting ball for Bellingham I think Rashford felt that he was being impeded by the referee and pulled back and he's making that point actually now very vociferously meanwhile play continues upfield with Gunn keeping his nerve under pressure finding Robertson and then McGregor can work it through the midfield for McTominay and Scotland are on the front foot and able to turn. They trail 2-0. McTominay's long diagonal. Picking out Robertson, trying to volley a ball inside the area. Uh, Walker, it's come off Christie's done well to keep it in and hook it uh, back inside the penalty area. And Scotland have another chance to deliver here. Robertson, Ford, Christie. It's been lively since coming on. Little layoff. Back for Robertson, deep ball from him, but Dykeson made a run into the centre of the six-yard box. The ball went to the far post area, and Trippier could let it run across him and out of play for an England throw. Scotland nil, England two on Talk Sport. Yeah, I'm not sure England have, have picked the tempo up that they showed in the first half. I, I've not seen enough players want to make that run in behind to stretch the game. Everyone wants a touch of the ball now. I suppose it's understandable at 2-0, but it just in, entices pressure onto you so is that game management or is is that frustration I think it's game management it's got to you know you've got to think to yourself hang on I've got to do the hard miles to make the game easy rather than say oh I can conserve energy now I've got a big game of the weekend well, Ryan Chris has just tried his luck again this time from uh, fully 30 yards and he's fired it wide uh, but he has been very lively since coming on. He's made a difference. Yeah, he has. You know, he's, he's seen a lot of the ball. You know, he, he does have that that extra little bit of quality as well. He's done a little reverse pass for John McGinn, and it was uh, Andy Roberts that found himself in the box. It's actually cut it out, kept possession of the ball, but it's just having that awareness around him again has to communicate 
and it might, might he's receiving the ball right on the corner of the six yard box if it, if it gets through to him there it was good quality from uh, uh, Ryan Christie uh, so Christie is playing as a, a left sided attacking midfielder uh, the role that McGinn had McGinn's moved out to the right where McTominay was McTominay has moved back into Gilmore's position in midfield that's how Scotland have shuffled things around and they'll bring it forward now with Hickey and a left footy shot was blocked and well blocked by Rice inside his penalty area Scotland get it back with McGregor sorry Stu as Hickey makes a run off the ball left footed is curved inside the box and Dunk will chest it back to his goalkeeper Ramsdale yeah we've got a situation at the moment where when England are getting attacked um, Bellingham Rashford and Harry Kane are up the pitch uh, Foden's half cocked halfway back and all of a sudden everyone's looking at each other saying well who's going to tackle him then I'm doing the pretty stuff I don't really want to do the dirty stuff and someone in our team's got to do the dirty stuff for us to do the pretty stuff eventually. Uh, Dunk's ball forward is uh, a misdirected and miscalculated pass. Dykes will then be beaten by Dunk on the edge of the penalty area as he tried to field McTominay's ball fired forward. It's back in the hands of Ramsdale again. 20 minutes into the second half, Scotland nil, England two. From an England perspective, the last six, seven minutes hasn't been great. So Scotland made the double change, they've been on top. Clearance from Ramsdale over halfway. And now Maguire will uh, volley it back, but only after a free kick has been uh, given against the retreating Declan Rice, who I think caught McGregor uh, on the uh, halfway line. That's a free kick that Scotland will look to take with Jack Hendry. And if Scotland were to score the next goal, then uh, the game changes markedly. It is 2-0 to England at the moment. Tierney plays on the left of three centre-halves for his country. Christie's done well again, finding McTominay in space in the uh, midfield. Now it goes out to the dark, thick set Hickey. Hickey towards the uh, edge of the penalty area. McTominay trying to help it on. Maguire is in there. Hickey around the corner of the penalty area. Trippier did really well to dig it clear. And England will try and break. And will break quickly down the left hand side with Rashford. And he's got Kane and Bellingham making runs ahead of him. He's found Bellingham. Bellingham trying to hook it across. Uh, but he sliced it over the bar on the turn. And he's had a play for a goal kick. Scotland are getting a lot of success just as, as, as uh, McTominay and McGinn for the fact that England have dropped a lot deeper. And you're talking about the, the, the front three, the front four doing that ugly work. The, the distances are too big. And Scotland will bring it forward again with Robertson sliding it in. He's in for an own goal. And Scotland are back in the game. And he's thoroughly merited after the last six or seven minutes. Robertson picking up on the right hand side of the penalty area. And it's Harry Maguire on the stretch who's got a left foot to it and diverted it in past Ramsdale. And midway through the second half, a lifeline for Scotland. Harry Maguire's own goal makes it Scotland 1, England 2. Yeah, as I say, this is the penalty you pay if too many of your players want to take easy street and see the game out when the game isn't there to be seen now. And as it came across, it was Maguire who's put his foot out and di directed it into the goal for an own goal. But too many England players at the other side of the ball are not breaking their neck to get back goal side. Well, look, look, they've, got, they've got to make their mind up they've got to step up and, and make sure the distances are right I think it's an excellent ball from Andy Robertson you know in behind Harry Maguire has to make contact there he has to make contact if anything a better contact put it out for a corner and clear such a difficult one for a, de a defender to, to defend there well the goal has come at the end of Scotland's best period of the game and they're hungry for more Robertson will bring the ball forward here Dykes down towards the left-hand side again. Robertson hooking it inside the area and Dykes got there first, but off balance as he climbed, could only get the forehead to it and flick it wide. But there's a different feel around Hampden Park now. Scotland have halved the deficit and they feel that there's still plenty of mileage left in this game for them to get a positive result. Well, England have opened the door a little bit and Scotland have, have put their size 10 Dr Martin straight through it and gone after the game and credit to them for it. As I said, I'm seeing four England players just stood in and around the halfway line looking back at their defence trying to deal with the onslaught that is Scotland. So what does Gareth Southgate need to do to shake this up? Is this a question of making changes, fresh personnel to try and rectify this problem, getting a vociferous message across to 
And those that you would perceive to be the guilty parties? Well, we're in a position at the moment. We either, we're either going to score a goal to win the game or we're going to be chasing it if we're not careful. So the players on the pitch at the moment, the three behind uh, Harry Kane, I think have got to do a little bit more and read the game. The game doesn't need them stood up the pitch now. It needs them to get in contact with the midfield and back line. It's Rashford, Foden and, and Bellingham that you're talking about as uh, Hickey has the ball for Scotland. Uh, a little bit more action on the England bench uh, out of our view. Uh, but I think a, a double change is uh, going to be made. Saka and Ezra. Uh, look as though they're the uh, players that are going to be introduced. It's Scotland 1, England 2. And England substitute Harry Maguire for putting through his own net to get England or get Scotland back into this game after Foden and Bellingham have scored twice in a three-minute spell in the first half. Here's Lyndon Dykes. Dykes laying it off towards the inside right position again can help it down towards Robertson it's all Scotland at the moment Robertson hooking inside the area and another half chance as Dykes came to meet it and he's headed it over the bar in fact it was McGinn that got there first and he might have done better and England are under the cotch here they will make a double change Rashford is the first player to come off Sack is coming on for him and Aberici Eze is also going to be coming on. He became the 57th David Tott under Gareth Southgate when he played the final quarter of the game in Malta. And he's going to come on here, I think, for Phil Foden. So Foden and Rashford off, and Eze and Saka are on, Stuart. Yeah, this is where I sort of have a little bit of a frustration with Marcus Rashford. I think he could grab hold of the game for 90 minutes and run past people and be like a Thierry Henry do you remember Henry in the Premier League it was like a, a man against kids at occasion I just think he fades out the game too, too readily and this second half is a point in case for me uh, but Chris a couple of great moves down the left hand side for Scotland and uh, a couple of headers one going wide and one over the bar yeah well John McGinn will, he'll be disappointed He's, the run was perfect the ball in uh, great link up with, with Robertson and, and Tierney uh, good end product as well but you know what he's, he's got in front of his man just all the pace was on the cross just make sure you hit the target there and you're, you're asking uh, you're causing some problems I think he's shown great character from Scotland you know they've gone in had a, a, a bloody nose in the first half second half they've come out with real character got on the front foot England had dropped off it but they've carried on and steamrolled England at present Maguire again in possession but able to find Lewis Dunk in the uh, first half it was five shots without reply in England's favour second half seven shots to one in Scotland's favour although only one of those has been on target now England will work it forward here and again the flag might come up in a moment but Eze is through and it's an excellent save from goalkeeper Gunn it might yet break Kane's way Gunn eventually will chip it out of play the flag didn't come up and it will be an England throw. Yeah, Barachi Eze might just have killed Scotland off there, but it's a sharp chance for him only moments after coming on, and he couldn't take it. Once again, good run, diagonal run, diagonal ball in behind, and that's how easy it was to break the line. We had, This is the first time probably this half we've actually seen that. Yeah, but look where the, the England defensive line is. Straight away, they're in the right areas, that attacking, that attacking uh, area. The, you know, the movement's been good, but England were dropping deeper and deeper. You know, they've brought on fresh legs that are going to do that defensive side as well, but like I say, that should be in the back of the net there for, for Eze. Excellent first touch, got in front of his man uh, and got the shot away in the end. Delicious crossfield ball from Kyle Walker and Trippier after a little one-two with Eze. And Kane at the far post, drills it in, but doesn't count, he's pushed his man. And a foul on Tierney and a free kick which will be taken by Scotland and by uh, Angus Gunn inside his six-yard box. 73 gone, Scotland 1, England 2. I don't think there was any need for Kane to do that. He, caught, he should have probably just held his ground and then backed off at the last minute and just used his chest. He's had his hands, both hands in the back of Tierney and uh, free kick. Yeah, no complaints, as has just been nutmeg there by Hickey and Scotland will bring it forward, but only get a halfway. He goes out of play for a throw. Well, it's been one of those nights that gives you plenty to react to. And the sports bar is the perfect place to do it. 03717 22 Now the lines are open now. 
And Jason Cundy and Jamie O'Hara will take your calls. Excellent first half from England, not a good second half. And Scotland, the absolute mirror image of that. Here's Carl Walker. And Scotland will feel that uh, such has been their performance in the second half, notwithstanding the fact that Eze has just missed a good opportunity to make it 3-1. Scotland might feel that they deserve to be on level terms now. Here's Eze. Off McTominay. Trivia back for Maguire. Declan Rice is able to take over and just lofts the ball down towards Walker, who controls it. Just given a, a slight nudge on the way through by Christie's, maintained possession. The referee acknowledges that. Rice, just on the edge of the centre circle. Ezra, in good form at the start of this season for Palace, spinning it down towards Bellingham. Who will bring it forward here and drive inside the area and gun saves with his feet at the near post, kicks it away. And out of play for a throw to England. It's far, it's far too easy. It's far too easy. You know, Bellingham, he's, he's driving through. Someone's got to make the challenge. As soon as he comes into the 18-yard box, then it's you've got to be very, very cautious, but still just drags it onto his left, tries to find uh, the, the, the near post area there. Good save with the, the, the foot of uh, right foot of Angus Gunn. Yeah, he's, he's got a lovely way, hasn't he? He just sways with the ball, almost. It's got to be a challenge, though, Stuart. Here's Carl Walker. Walker back for Lewis Dunter. Walker again. Kaya Saka just peeling down towards the uh, right-hand touchline, really keeping the width for England since uh, coming on. And he's got possession now, just uh, glides back inside, which he did uh, quite beautifully, to good effect in that game against Ukraine at the weekend, where he forced a stunning save from Bushan and tipped his effort onto the bar. It's the closest that England came to a winner that night. Here's Maguire, we're in the final quarter of an hour here on Talk Sport. Jim Bradford, Chris Uelamo and Stuart Pearce talking through the action at Hampden, where it's Scotland 1, England 2. And Lewis Dunk's giving it away. Phillips trying to rescue it in the midfield. And McGregor's won it back for Scotland. And it's then played back in by Robertson. And it goes through to Jack Henry. Henry to his right-hand side for Porteous. And Porteous travels into England territory, playing it into the feet of McTominay. Now back towards retreating Lyndon Dykes, whose uh, family hail from... Dumfries, the Dykes on the book of uh, Queen of the South uh, for some time, but uh, he himself born and raised in Queensland, Australia. And a sack is pulled back, and a yellow card is shown. It's the fourth of the night. And a free kick which will be taken by uh, England, I think it was Tierney, who was the uh, guilty party there. And uh, he's been cautioned in the book, along with Hendry, his teammate, and Phillips and Bellingham of England. Scotland 1, England 2 remains the score. Walker to take this free kick from halfway. And just flights it out towards the far touchline. The referee has said, no, take it again. I'm not too sure why. He's just putting his notebook back in his pocket, or was the ball moving? Not sure, but it's going to have to be retaken. And the message has now uh, got across to the players, and uh, Bellingham will... Just help the ball down towards Walker so he can respot it. Now everybody's happy and we can restart proceedings again. Walker flicking forward for Rice, who made a good run for him off the ball. Down towards Bakayo Saka. 2 1 to England, but Scotland asking some decent questions. Jude Bellingham in a central position, 25 yards from goal. Chipped down towards Rice on the corner of the penalty area. Steers ahead of back for Kyle Walker. Good shape on his ball in. Saka couldn't quite get there. As a can on the edge of the penalty area after it's half cleared. Now it comes for Rice. Rice to Kyle Walker. Didn't quite reach him. Headed away, but only as far as Saka on the corner of the penalty area. Trying to twist and turn. Robertson blocks the shot. Rice is able to pick it up. And Tomlin snaps at his heels, but Rice maintains possession. Good ball in from him towards Kane. And it's steered away at the far post by Hickey. For the first thing the corner of the second half. Great play there by Declan Rice. A potential break on. He deals with that, drives to his right and whips a fantastic ball in. Horrible ball for uh, Scotland to deal with. And Hickey done extremely well. It's the better shape about England now that the substitutions have been made with uh, Eze and Saka coming on. Trippier going across to take the corner on the England left, 11 to go. 
just too far ahead of Bellingham, who made a late near post run. Scotland repel it. And England will work it all the way back for Ramsdale. And the Scots are going to be bringing Ferguson on in a moment and Armstrong as well. And Scotland have pushed forward and England with one long ball forward have got in behind, albeit in a wide position. Danny comes through the midfield for Declan Rice. Rice back for Phillips. Phillips in turn to Harry Maguire. Again, the crowd letting you know every time he's in possession. And he's got it again here, Maguire. England more than happy to take a conservative route through the midfield and this phase of play. Just stringing the passes together. Running time off the clock. Ten to go. 2 1 England lead. Phillips, Saka. Saka drawing Robertson with him into a midfield position. Saka's maintained possession and now can turn as the chance to run at Robertson. Instead, lays it off to his left hand side for Maguire. Good ball between the lines from him to Eze. Now to Trippier. Trippier to Rice. This is much better football from England than we've seen for a while. Bellingham. Bellingham able to turn. It's a really good turn as well. Gets away from Christie. Helps it in for Kane. It is a picture book goal. And with 10 minutes to go, that surely seals it for England. The 150th anniversary match between Scotland and England is going to go the way of the visitors. And whilst they haven't been great in the second half, they have surely sealed the win with one of the best goals they've scored for a while. A magnificent team goal. Kane on the end of it. Goal number 59 for his country. He scores away to Scotland again, and that should be job done. Yeah, great football there. It was Rice's forward ball, and then Bellingham under big, big pressure. Great turn, and what a slide ball that was to Harry Kane. Took it on his right, just cushioned it in front of himself, and slid it into the far corner with his left. He's got so much to do there, Bellingham still. He's got two Scotch players around him. He turns very, very well. And it's just the way to pass. The first touch from Harry Kane just opens up the complete goal there. It's an excellent goal. You'll be thinking, what can you do to affect it? Can you get a challenge in on Bellingham? You know, there's got to be some sort of contact there. You can't roll two men. As I say, the kid's got some quality, though, Chris, to be fair to him. He's got on the back of that. will make a double change. Tierney and McGinn off. And uh, Stuart Armstrong has uh, come on, and Lewis Ferguson, who's a regular for Bologna in Serie A, uh, comes on as well for his seventh cap, and like uh, five of the previous six off the bench. Eight to go. Scotland one, England three. Don't know how many passes there were in that move for England, but certainly in the, the 20s or 30s, so many of the England players were involved in it. And Kane put it away with a plum. His eighth goal in his last eight games. His second against Scotland. And it's his 51st goal as England captain in 61 games. His 59th goal for his country, all told. Scotland one, England three on Talk Sport. I think when, when the dust settles on this one for Gareth, he'll be looking and saying, you know what, we've played some really good football on occasion. But there was that period in the second half, and if we're taking someone on later stages of a big tournament, you won't get away with, with a downtime in a game. Scotland play the ball inside the penalty area now from a free kick, and Porteous coming round the back. And was put under enough pressure from Rice that his header couldn't hit the target. England's turn for a double change. Gallagher and Wilson are the players that are coming on. Harry Kane's number the first to come up. Uh, he will be coming off, but he's uh, done his job. And Bellingham off as well. So Kane and Bellingham off, and Gallagher and Wilson on. Yeah, as I say, Bellingham's been pretty solid tonight. He's played some great flashes. He, he probably epitomised England's performance, I think, Bellingham. Some of the best stuff went through him. And then there was that little bit of period in the in late on, in, well, in, in the second half, where Scotland come back into the game. And then what was needed in the game? It was probably a better defensive shape just to see out the press from Scotland. And we just got a little bit loose. So two of England's goal scorers have... Uh made way in this uh, double change the other one Phil Foden already off 3-1 England lead and it's their fans that you can now hear away to our left hand side in the uh, sort of 8 o'clock area of 
Hampden Park if you're looking at uh, this big bowl as a clock face, wonderful stadium. And it's been treated to a good game tonight. A free kick taken by Scotland inside their own half. Christie. He's certainly done his chances of uh, starts down the line, the world of good, with this uh, little cameo that he's produced coming off the bench. Ball goes out towards the Scottish right for Hickey. And then he goes back towards Porteous, 10 yards outside his own penalty area. Long driven ball four from him, giving uh, Dyke something to chase. Knocked away though by Maguire. And Christie might be uh, first of the loose ball in the midfield. Phillips stuck a toe in, which could divert it into Scotland territory. But Tomney has it back. Hickey will take a touch and come inside and then hit the ball uh, behind square for Jack Hendry. And Hendry now brings it forward and plays it down towards Robertson on the uh, Scottish left. Elsewhere, incidentally, the other games in Scotland's group, it is still Norway 2, Georgia 0, which is going to postpone the celebrations of Scotland's qualification. The other game in that group, Spain 6 up against Cyprus. And in England's group, North Macedonia lead 2-0 in Malta. It's Italy 2, Ukraine 1. And if... Uh, those results stay as they are. That means that England will only need a draw against Italy to qualify. We'll have that game for you October the 17th, live on Talk Sport. England next in action on October the 14th when they play against Australia. And that one live from Wembley as well here on Talk Sport. Long ball play forward by the Scottish backline. Christie will chase it, but easy for Walker to mop up. And he'll just guide her. Header back for Aaron Ramsdale. Four to go, and Scotland one, England three. Well, I've got to say, Scotland very patient with it, playing across the the, the back uh, the back line. So many opportunities that they can go with quality up to Lyndon Dykes. He's he's moving, he's presenting himself, and it just wasn't the case. And then it's Ryan Christen that's running in behind, and that's when we decide to go. It's in, it's important with quality. Hit, hit the big man, and then can we pick up second balls? You know, he's he's, he's he is he is a he is going to win more 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 uh, more often than not than those, those aerial duels. Dunk goes back for Ramsdale into the final four minutes. And the lines, remember, open for Sports Bar here on TalkSport. With your chance to react, from either an England or a Scotland perspective. 03717 Jamie O'Hara, Jason Cundy taking your calls. And uh, TalkSport's England correspondent Faker others will uh, be speaking to the headline makers from both sides. And we'll hear from the managers as well. All of that reaction to come with your reaction interspersed on the talk sport on the sports bar coming up at the conclusion of this game which England lead 3-1 Saka and so what a free kick fouled by Robertson Declan Rice back for Dunk and Dunk to Calvin Phillips Phillips will go back to Dunk Stuart what have you made of uh, Lewis Dunk's first performance for his country for five years yeah I was just going to pick up on him I think he's done very well he made a couple of very very good defensive headers when we needed him in the uh, in the centre of the goal and I think on the ball he's looked more and more composed and he fits into this England uh, set up very well he's, if you're asked to uh, deal with a ball at the back he's certainly adept at doing that well he's got it now and he's more than comfortable and confident of bringing it forward and he's found Saka, Saka in turn to Walker Callum Wilson makes an early darting run, Walker happy just to slow things down for a moment, then Gallagher makes a, a run from the centre of midfield out of the right wing but Walker doesn't look to play him in either and England will work it backwards just to maintain easy possession and then the five Phillips and then Dunk and then Ramsdale and then Maguire and the, uh, the ironic cheers when Maguire in possession have dissipated long since Harry Maguire own goal tonight but that's probably the only mistake that he's made his distribution from the back has been excellent and leading it by three goals to one with Phillips now in possession I think Ramsdale's done done himself no harm tonight he, he's shown he's done he's had nothing to do basically with his hands um, but what he's done with his feet has been pretty impressive I think and now Scotland will uh, be making another change and Jack and Patterson are the players that are going to be coming on here, Chris. Yeah, again, it's it's, it's like for like. You know, you're looking at uh, Jack. He can just come on, likes of a, a, a 
Callum McGregor just sits in front, receives the ball, and can he move with it? Uh, and then Nathan Patterson, just that energy down the right hand side. You know, I think uh, he is very, very lively, great potential. Uh, and like I say, he is, he, he is going to, well, he is a fantastic player already, but he, he is going to be one of the good ones. Uh, so it is Jack and McGregor and Patterson for Hickey to uh, like for like swaps. Ryan Jack has only started one of Rangers' league games so far this season, but one for his 17th cap. Nathan Patterson, who's uh, an ever-present for Everton in the Premier League this season, on for his 50. Still only 21 as well. He's uh, got a, a very bright international future ahead of him. 3-1 England lead. Phillips looking the ball forward. Looks as though, unless there's a, a dramatic late Scottish comeback, that the, the trivia question is still going to be in place. Who is the last Scotland player born in Scotland to score a winning goal against England? Just give you a little bit of time to contemplate who that might have been. The last time that Scotland won a game against England, Don Hutchison, who was born in Gateshead, was the scorer of the goal. The last time that England lost in Glasgow was Richard Goff, who scored the goal, who was born in Stockholm. England winning it back again with Gallagher in the midfield. Gallagher, oh, just got the... The wrong pass in towards Wilson, who was quick to let him know. Gallagher had done the hard work there in driving forward, but he couldn't find Wilson. And the ball goes all the way through to our right-hand side. Into three minutes of stoppage time, there has been another goal in Norway. Ian Danter. Interesting, Norway 2, Georgia 1 as we enter stoppage time. Budu Zivzivadze gets a goal back for Georgia, steering the ball home really neatly at the near post from across from the left. Maybe Scotland might have some good news after all. A couple of minutes of stoppage time left. Norway 2, Georgia 1. A Georgian equaliser there and Scotland have qualified tonight. And that would certainly lift the spirits <laughs> here at Hampden Park. We are in three minutes of added time at the end of the game. And England leading by three goals to one. Dunk just flicking out towards the left-hand side. The answer to that question is that it was John Robertson who was the uh, last... A Scottish international born in Scotland to score a winner against England and the ball chipped by Ramsdale down towards the near side Walker helping it on Saka will chase after it and has uh, lost out to Ryan Jack he's been fouled and Jack claimed that he just stood his ground Robertson helping as a uh, helping uh, Saka excuse me back to his feet and it's a free kick which will be taken on the halfway line by England's Carl Walker who's had another excellent game tonight Stu yeah yes I mean it was a uh... I think I read somewhere or heard somewhere that he was contemplating international retirement. He will be a, a massive loss to England when it's time uh, to hang his boots up, as he would for Manchester City. He, he's turn of pace, just improves by the year. Yep, Gareth has uh, talked about of international retirement twice. And this is still very much a boon, his presence in the uh, England right-back position. Scotland ball in the midfield with uh, the very neat and tidy Ferguson and a chance to pull the ball inside the England penalty area one last time but far too far ahead of Lyndon Dykes and it just goes through for Ramsdale this one petering out the third goal really has, has killed him yeah in fairness I, I don't think that's a bad ball from, from Ryan Christie there I think Lyndon Dykes is a little bit frustrated he's not seeing a lot of it at the minute he's, he's, he's shown he's shown up he's wanting the ball he's not receiving it but he's just got to be alive if he makes that run there for Christie he's definitely going to be getting on the on the end of it good quality there from Christie still playing in Oslo still no way to Georgia 1 last knockings here at Hampden Park Eze finding Gallagher as a one-time Palace teammate now it goes out towards Trippier and Declan Rice firing the ball back to the heart of the England back line where Dunk will be able to bring it under control down towards Kyle Walker Walker with a long ball forward inviting Saka to chase after a gun coming to the left-hand side of his area dealt with it with uh, no threat forward towards Robertson Robertson back for Hendry to Porteous and out towards the right-hand side for Patterson Patterson turning and turning into trouble but foul by Eze and that is the last action of the game the 150th anniversary match between Scotland and England ends in the same way as 48 of the previous 149 in an England victory and their record in this fixture in the recent past very impressive haven't been beaten here on Scottish soil since 1985 
a record that seemed destined to continue tonight when Foden and Bellingham scored twice in a three-minute spell just after the half-hour mark. A Harry Maguire own goal made things decidedly interesting. Scotland missed a couple of decent chances after that, but Harry Kane was at the end of a wonderful England team move to make it 3-1. England's performance up and down. Scotland gave a good account of themselves at times, particularly in the second half. But England have got the job done. They've won by three goals to one, the 600th victory of their history. Well, there's a big hug there from Gareth Southgate with Jude Bellingham and any wonder that magic from him to set up that goal that sealed victory for England was very, very special indeed. He is some player. Uh, all the England and Scotland players gathering together centre circle and uh, hugs and handshakes all round. I've got to say, a lot of the Scotland fans left well before the end. They knew their team was beaten. And at the same time, the England fans were singing Harry Maguire. He's winning 3-1, uh, which I thought was quite fitting because uh, Maguire, in trying to cut out a cross, put the ball in his own net. Other than that, as Jim said in commentary, he was uh, faultless when he came on and contributed to the England victory. Scotland 1, England 3, and I will be joining... Ali McCoy, then Alan Brazil, true Scots, former Scotland internationals, on the breakfast show tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. So too will the former England manager Sam Allardyce. So too will the former England defender Phil Jagielka. They'll all be on the breakfast show. That's tomorrow morning from 6 a.m. on Talk Sport. I'm really looking forward to that. I have to say, as the uh, England players go over to the fans in the corner, away to our left, they're all still there, all still singing. They've been mainly singing songs about Harry Maguire for most of the second half, supporting the player who's been under fire, Maguire, and who was uh, getting a bit of a stick from the Scotland crowd as well. They did love his own goal. But a good performance from uh, England in the end. Stuart Pearce, there was a spell where Scotland took control. Christie came on. I thought he was brilliant for uh, Scotland. We'll talk about that shortly. But Gareth Southgate reacted, made substitutions, turned the game back in England's favour, and in the end, 3-1 is probably just about right. Yeah, two sides of it, I think, from Gareth's point of view, for me, when uh, when we have a look at the game, well, when he has a look at the game this week with his coaches, first of it, some of the talent he played was very, very good, very concisive, much better than in the Ukraine, cut through the opposition pretty well, good balls in behind, good movement in behind. The other side of that is Scotland had momentum in the second half and we struggled to wrestle it back off them. For me, too many players wanted to stand up the pitch and say, hang on a minute, who's going to get this back for us and let me have another go at running at the opposition? We just have to solve that because against better opposition, and no disrespect to Scotland, against better opposition, they'll punish you for that and they'll send you out of tournament if you're not careful. You've got to laugh at uh, Scotland. Let me just tell you the picture here. Scotland's players have just tried to go around the pitch to give their fans the applause. This is a team, by the way, that's won their, all their qualifiers are on the brink of qualification and they're going around to applaud the fans and the fans have gone home. I, I, honestly, Chris Oelamo, I'm a bit bewildered by that. It's, I appreciate they've lost the game to England and that's not a positive for Scotland. The, 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 the rally in the second half was a positive, but... This team's working miracles in their qualifying group. So why didn't the fans applaud that? Yeah, well, I think that just shows you the what it means to the fan when they when they play against England. You know, the, the disappointment there. Uh, yeah, you know what? They, they, they've been excellent. They've been excellent. I thought they deserved a bit better than that from yeah, the Scotland fans. Yeah, I, I totally agree. The seats are all empty. Totally you can see the salt are in the stands. It's, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely amazed that the Scotland fans have decided to head off well before the end and not applaud their players who have given them a qualifying campaign from heaven I'm stunned by that honestly no I totally agree I totally agree Uh, especially with the way the atmosphere was before and uh, during that second half as well Uh, you know that everyone will be disappointed I think players as well I don't think they give a great account of themselves tonight I think uh, they only came in they had that kind of momentum in the second half because England kind of defended a little bit deeper took the foot off the pedal a little bit and then like you say they made the changes and, and, and took the game by the scruff of the neck again so it just shows you the, the, the class the class of England uh, but like you say we have we have we have kind of we have improved it's just it's, if anything that brings us back down to the ground doesn't it we've got Spain up the next qualifying we have to go and get something there to, to, to obviously qualify uh, and then we've got France after that so they, they don't get any easier they don't. Um, there possibly could have been some cause for celebration for Scotland tonight, but that wasn't to be either. They needed a draw in Oslo 
in a qualifier, but it didn't happen. Ian Danter.